Hey guys, welcome back to Maxplain Donor for Unification. Today I have another faction guide for you, this time for the Space Marines. Yeah, these are the quote unquote standard Space Marines from which all um, chapters are more or less inspired, or how should I say, have a different take on it. But these are like the vanilla Space Marines. They aren't that vanilla anymore as they got a f whole bunch of new units, um, some adjustments as well. Um, and they are not, no, how should I say, they also got like a little chapter in the campaign they were always the Blood Ravens and so they also get uh, some Blood Raven, uh, how should I say, themed units. Uh, for example, the uh, quote unquote Primark unit is the chapter master Gabriel Angelos, for example. Uh, Space Marines in general are, let's say, sturdy, uh, slow on their feet compared to, let's say, Elder or Dark Elder or stuff. Uh, but are sturdy, so they take uh, a lot of damage, they dish out okay-ish damage, and uh, more importantly, they are uh, very versatile, especially their tactical space marines. But more about that in the safe game. And here we are in the safe game file. Before we go through the buildings and units and stuff, uh, as usual, we talk about the resources and unit caps. Their resources are more or less the standard requisition and power, not more or less, they are the standard requisition and power, um, requisition gain from capturing points, uh, building listing posts and stuff, getting two upgrades as well, power pretty much similar as well, you have generators, you have power, uh, bigger generators, and of course you have upgrades for the generators as well. Um, unit caps are also standard, your squad cap and your vehicle cap, squad cap starts uh, with 10, vehicle cap starts with 0, goes to 20, 20. Um, you have four upgrades that increase your infantry, uh, your vehicle cap by plus five, two upgrades for your infantry to increase your um, infantry cap, squad cap by two, but also I think almost every sergeant in the, um, in the infantry increases the squad cap by one. You have your machine cult, which is your building uh, machine, uh, actually the tank production is uh, increases the vehicle cap by plus two and the titan building the uh, bigger greater machine nave increases your support slash vehicle cap by plus four now we will see that i come to uh, right player here yes we can now talk about the buildings the buildings we have here your hq is your stronghold increases um or has a different visual as it goes up which is always nice if you want to tell if someone has tacked up already or has not, uh, builds your standard um, builder and capo units, also has the upgrades for your squad cap increase, has one hero in the chaplain and later on gives you some uh, special units, you could say, on the way. In terms of unit production, you have your barracks, which has uh, your force commander and a lot of, which is your primary commander and a lot of infantry options. In tier two, you can build your sacred artifact, which gives you more hero units, like Apothecary, Lab Brian, and also some two new um, heroes slash commanders. Your machine cult gives you a whole bunch of ground-based and also airborne vehicles. In tier three, you can get the orbital relay, which by itself does not produce many new units. You get your chapter master and also ironclad dreadnought, but it has the ability to launch a drop pod. Um, you can more or less shove every, more or less every, I think assault marines you cannot, but um, almost every infantry unit inside here, almost every commander unit as well as all dreadnought variants you can put in here to drop on the enemy. The good old steel rain um, stuff that every, how should I say, and, and even in vanilla, when I played on my noob times, not that I'm really that good right now, when the game goes on to tier three and higher, your backline will just get drop potted by dreadnoughts after dreadnoughts. So everybody loves it, unless you're not the Space Marine player. <coughs> <laughs> and then in tier four, you can uh, build the Crater Machine Nave, which gives you, which gives you access to, to uh, your tier one and tier two Titan, as well as some more or less super heavies. It's a Land Raider Helios, which is a a relic unit and you have a land raider anvilarium which is a um, titan killer unit so you have this is more or less a super heavy you could say 
In terms of research, there are some researches in the uh, um, buildings, and more importantly, uh, most importantly, in the sacred artifact for your commanders. But for your standard, quote unquote, standard units, you have upgrades in the armory, like damage, like like bionics uh, target finders for damage and health. There is also like special weapons for the commanders. Um, here is more special weapons, and this is a charge um, that is researched for your honor guard squad, a melee squad. Then you see here the War Gear Terminator armor, that's an upgrade for your Force Commander. But we will talk about the Force Commander later. In terms of income, you have, of course, your listening post that can be upgraded twice for some more income. And then you have your Plasma Generators and Thermoplasm Generators, pretty standard. In terms of defensive capabilities, you have, of course, your listening posts. You have your Heavy Bolter turret that can be upgraded into a Missile turret. And you have Mines. Yeah, one thing about Deep Strike, um, the Terminators, if you produce them, they are directly Deep Strikeable from the um, barracks. This is the only unit that can Deep Strike from the barracks. Um, let's just confirm if they can um, also be Deep Strike from the uh, Orbital Relay Beacon. They can. So they can. And here we are again. Uh, sorry for the little hiccup. Some, for some reason the game decided to crash. So we can see again that the Terminator squad is able to be put into the orbital relay. Uh, it would be faster if I just teleported over and put it in there. Probably was a random crash. I thought maybe it was because putting like Terminators in the orbital relay would cause a crash. It does not. It has a delay, of course. It also has a delay if you put uh, the Terminators outside and then back into your barracks. But yeah, orbital relay is really nice. You can only have two um, and. Uh, treadnoughts take up two, sp two of the three spaces, but you can always have one prepared. So if you deep strike this one, the next one is already uh, there to be deep strike. So you can have up to two treadnoughts per orbital relay to be deep strike right away. So you can have up to four um, treadnoughts in the enemy base in a nick of a few seconds. So really, really strong in that sense. Okay, I think this is all about the buildings. Let's talk about the units. First of all, we will talk about the commander and builder units. The builder unit is a servitor, does nothing special, cannot attack, can only build and repair, is rather fast, but yeah, has not a lot of health, will be um, targeted by harassing um, uh, harassment squads all the time, so keep him away from uh, any bolt or fire or whatever, so they, uh, he is very fragile. Uh, second builder you can think of is a commander by itself. It's Master of the Forge, Xeril, which is, if you can't tell, it's a uh, voice by Matthew the Frenchie. And I think it's also like a made up. I'm not sure if it's like a real law um, uh, character or if it's uh, made up or not, but it has a usual more or less usual tech marine stuff. I see a Necron um, uh, artifact here used. <laughs> Normally like tech priests like to use it, don't they? Um, has a lot of weapons um, because of his uh, servo arms. Ability wise he can build, he cannot repair because he has an aura that automatically repairs um, vehicles and maybe buildings. What does it state? Uh, so repairs all no vehicles, not buildings. So he cannot repair buildings by itself it seems, but he can um, auto repair um, vehicles, which should be uh, free of charge, so it's uh, better than repairing in, in that sense, maybe slower. His abilities are really nice, he has um, special frag grenades, you can see here. Um, they are master crafted, so they probably deal more damage. They're, oh, they share a cooldown, I didn't know that. That's good, balance-wise, but you need uh, to get the ops of the Omnisire going, which is a, a better melter. It stuns also the vehicle not only damage it, it um, for that you need the frag grenade research and for this you need the melter research. So you have two grenades on this guy, really important, really good. And then you have bolster defenses, which gives you a temporary heavy cover building here. Um, it cannot be targeted, so it cannot be killed, um, but only stays for, let's say, more or less the duration of the cooldown here. So um, you can only have like uh, two up for a short amount of time, but for the most part, you only can have one. It is also free of charge, so if you have Xeril around, you will uh, like to use it uh, if you want to defend with something. Or if you would like attack a listening post and uh, reduce the 
damage you take in the meantime. Before we jump into the force commander and stuff, we will quickly talk about the skull probe. The skull probe is yeah, a skull probe. It is um, fast, it can detect, um, can be researched to be infiltrated, and most importantly, it has the sabotage ability, which stuns a enemy vehicle, including titans. So if you're facing titans in the late, late, late game, just spam skull probes. Skull probes, infiltrate the skull probes, and use the sabotage ability. Make it one after another, after another, after another. Counter stun, a uh, uh, chain stun, a titan is really annoying for the opponent and really effective strategy in itself. Uh, the last non-hero commander unit, you could say, is the Apothecary. The Apothecary is, yeah, what, what the name states. He um, increases the regeneration of units around it, can be attached to squads as well. <coughs> Before we go to the 50 shades of force commander you can have here, we will talk about the um, other main co uh, commanders. The Chaplain is a buffed up, you could say, Apothecary, has insane uh, HP generation to the squad he is attached to and also and health regeneration aura which I think also stacks up with the apothecary so if you have two squads one with the chaplain one with the apothecary the squad with the chaplain itself will regenerate like crazy has a demoralizing shout which slows an enemy squad for 10 seconds and breaks morale which is really good if you're like having a melee unit that wants to um, close ranged um, close the distance you you could say this is the way to go. Quite a lengthy cooldown, but really good uh, ability. Pretty good melee combatant by itself. Last but not least, we have the librarian. Let's see if I can have this the right way. No, we need player number three, I think. Computer three, no? Here we have it. Um, the librarian is your spellcaster. Um, has detection capabilities and starts with Smite. Smite is an AOE ability uh, mainly used against infantry and demons. Poof, really fast to cast, does quite good damage. Has weakened resolve, reduces the morale recovery rate of the target squad, so it's a debuff. Mm. And last but not least, Word of the Emperor. Um, all infantry near the librarian continue to take damage, but they will not die, so this is like the fighting juice ability and whatnot it has multiple uh, occasions of this effect that a uh, unit takes lethal damage but will not die um not a big fan of this kind of mechanic ability because it's really gimmicky because yes they will fight on but once the duration is over uh, they will just die altogether so it is a last ditch effort to save a squad or something um and then they can move try to move out of the way or something i'm not sure uh, would not consider this like the, the best ability. Okay, let's talk about the various force commanders. And as I am, um, no, we will stick. We will uh, stick with the standard force commander first. Uh, this, this is force commander Boreal because I have here walking and able to so can see it also on the big old Thunderhammer, the melter gun and whatnot, the the banner he has. So he has quite a lot of passive abilities, increasing the morale regeneration and stuff. Um, has these big old foot plates and stuff. It's all war gear that uh, the campaign war gear, the iron halo, the teleporter pack, which he normally does not have access to. Your standard force commander, you could say, in skirmish has um, no real auras. He increases the morale if he's attached to a squad, which more or less all uh, commanders do. And yeah, he has a passive damage increasing aura. It can be researched in tier two, which is really nice. Lengthy research, but then it's always available. And in tier 3 you can research the battle cry. The battle cry increases the damage of all squads around them and also the morale I see um, for a short amount of time. It's like boom and now everything fights harder. Really good. If you have an orbital relay beacon, no uh, just relay, in tier 3 you can then also use orbital bombardment. Everybody loves an orbital bombardment in their base of course. But as I said, there are multiple occasions of the Force Commander. And you can see here that there is a Terminator Force Commander and a Primaris Force Commander. It's all Boreal because I have here War Gear enabled. We will talk about the Terminator Force Commander. Uh, you may or may not remember the uh, research in Chapel Barracks. It is tier 4 if you have not tier um, the War Gear enabled. But if you have War Gear enabled, you need to have researched every single War Gear before you can get this one. So this is more or less um, better if you have a non hero war gear force commander because you have invested so much in the force commander and then exchange it for the terminator 
uh, yeah, not not that good, but most people tend to play without hero walker. So yeah, it's a good option to make your force commander like really a late game menace. You could say has a uh, power fist and melter. Oh no, this is a, this is a melter. Yeah, a melter. If you really search that, of course, has a teleport. If you have the teleporter pack uh, researched, and other than that, it has your standard force commander stuff. Can be attached. For this morale has an um, damage re reduction, uh, increasing aura, and the battle cry. If you research that, so he t um, takes over the abilities, you could say, and also has orbital department. So he's more or less a better fighter. I think a little slower, maybe, but can teleport and yeah, has a bigger health pool and bigger um, damage output. I would assume. Now we will jump over to the Primaris if we can. Yes, we can. Paranus Force Commander is, they, they all of course here, um, I should say, have a shared cap, so you cannot have the Force Commander and Paranus Force Commander. And if you have researched the Terminator Force Commander, you, uh, there's no way, to, he gets replaced by the Terminator Force Commander and no way to get the quote-unquote standard Force Commander back. Your Paranus Force Commander has, like, is a Primaris, what, uh, so he <laughs> deals more damage, has more health, um, is kind of, how should I say, um, faster the than uh, the Terminator Force Commander, so it's in tier 2 option if you e uh, either have lost your Force Commander in tier 1 or haven't built it in tier 1, you then you can build the Primaris variant of him in tier 2. Mm, really good combatant by itself, takes over the standard Force Commander abilities like the uh, damage aura and the two um, active abilities. But now we will jump over again to my first uh, how should I say, faction or whatever, and to talk about the last the commander you have here, that's your chapter master Gabriel Angelos. Uh, he's in terms of stats and availability a Primark. Um, don't quote me on if he's an actual Primark or not. Uh, judging by the size, he's probably not. So please don't uh, be angry about me. I think he's not a prim uh, Primark, but he has in terms of the role and strength in the game, he is more or less a Primark. He shares the standard Force Commander abilities like the Aura, the Battle Cry, the Orbital Bombardment, but he has two more abilities. He can jump if you have uh, researched the Teleporter Pack, he gets a Jump Pack instead because it's cool and has all these cool uh, Blood Ravens here, I, I suppose. And last but not least, he has an Iron Halo, which reduces all damage received by the Chapter Master for a a certain amount of time, for the um, which is, you could think of it like the machine spirit ability from a land raider. So really good, does not take uh, any resources, so no reason to not to use it in a fight. So with the commander units out of the way, we will now jump over to the infantry. And the infantry is plenty, because it is marines! Oof. Where to start? We will start with the Scout Marines. The Scout Marines are your Kepper unit right away. Um, rather cheap, don't do a lot of damage. Um, out damage or have a similar damage to, let's say, a Guardian. You could compare them. Get uh, weapons if you researched it. Uh, give me a second. Research the sniper training. So they can uh, get a flame on tier 1 and plasma guns in tier 2. Plasma guns actually make them quite a good combatant uh, in standard fights and can get sniper rifles in tier 1 already. Really expensive, but really deadly. Kills a orc in one shot, for example. Uh, limited to 2 in beginning and later to 4 if you research the stuff. Can't get infiltration in tier 2. Uh, needed in tier 2, because they will most likely be targeted down by anything uh, that is like a tank or a jump squad. Um, can be worth it, but also can be a, how should I say, resource trap, um, because they take 45, uh, 50, 45, it was right, uh, requisition to reinforce and another 40 and 20 uh, power for a sniper rifle day is uh, quite a lot of resources you put in one right, rather fragile model here, but very versatile and yeah, good. Speaking of versatile, we have the Space Marines code, which is the backbone of most Space Marines armies. They start off okay-ish and scale incredibly with all the upgrades you can get. They have two bionic levels, they have two target finder levels, they have special weapon upgrades, they have a, a sergeant which can get sergeant weapons and stuff. So they have 
quite a potential to scale in well into tier 3, if you ask me. Um, in tier 2, of course, as well. The sergeant gives them the Rela ability, which restores their morale and makes them, I think, for a short amount of time, morale damage immune, but it only states that it restores the morale. So it's, maybe it's just that. They can get frag grenades if you research it. They, the weapons in tier 1 are is limited to flamers. In tier 2, however, they have quite a variety. They have heavy bolters, plasma guns and missile launchers. And the missile launchers I want to highlight here. Not a lot of Space Marine chapters in the mod have access to missile launchers. And the missile launchers are that good because they have just such a big range. Can be used to um, kill listing posts and vehicles from afar. Really, really good in that sense. Um, a lot of very good Space Marines players, which I am not, um, will have only... They will not reinforce their Space Marines because they are really expensive in that. They will have only like four to maybe five models. The ideal number would be four Space Marines, a Sergeant, and then <coughs> four missile launchers, for example. So I have put them in a Rhino, drive around, put them out, four missile launchers, shoot, and yeah, everything is fine. Also working, with, of course, with heavy bolters and stuff. So um, you minimize your costs. This is something uh, I, I'm talking a bit of my ass right now, but uh, something you kind of want to do with space marines because they have a lot of things they they can do, but it's all rather expensive and uh, long to get if you get like all the upgrades and if you reinforce all your squads, you will run out of resources and it's not the most effective way. The most effective way is to specialize and make key decisions in uh reinforcing or getting upgrades. It's a difference to, uh, for example, Imperial Guard, where it's like basically a no-brainer to reinforce your um, your Guardsman to full because it's just so cheap and it brings more bodies because you will lose units either way. So in that sense, Space Marines, you do not want to reinforce fully if you uh, don't want to fight like in the next minute or two. Okay, with this little more general advice, we will now jump over to your last tier one uh, squad, which is your Assault Marines. The Assault Marines is a jump squad. Um, can be built in tier one if you get armory as well. Give also a search, get also a sergeant in tier two for some relay and some special weapons on himself. In tier two, they can get melter guns or lightning claws. In the beginning, they can only get one special weapons with another upgrade, they can get two. So not the most effective if you want to get melter guns on the field. I rather would use the lightning claws to double down on the melee capabilities. As I said, they can get melter bombs and can jump. In tier 2, your horizon widens. Um, you can get three new squads. We will start off with the Very Devastators, so. because you can get them right away in tier 2. You may see now a lot of Space Marines with heavy bolters and say, uh, I can get heavy bolters on my Marine squads. You can, but these guys, the Devastators, can be fielded without an armory, so this is one thing. And the other thing is you have more models. And the last thing is, look at the special weapons you have access to. You have multi melters right away. In tier three, tier 3, you can put on plasma cannons or less cannons. And even later, I think it's tier 4 or later, you can also get a graviton gun for some really good, what does it do? Spe uh, special vehicles and buildings. So really uh, good in late game. Get a more or less standard uh, sergeant around them may or may not be needed to uh, uh, sink in the 75 requisition. The sergeant, however, increases the morale. So I, it, for the most part, it doesn't hurt to have a sergeant around. But if you have like a really long range squad, the sergeant will most of the time be not uh, in range to fight. So uh, could be a way to again min max your economy uh, to not get a sergeant on the devastators. The second tier 2 squad is the Honor Guard. The Honor Guard is a replacement squad of the Grey Knight squad, uh, which Vanilla Space Marines had. Um, they have power swords and bolters, have a vortex grenade, which is which does exactly the same as the psychic abilities from the Grey Knights, but is like a grenade because they are no psychos, they are just Honor Guards. And they have also a special leader, the company Standard Bearer renders nearby units fearless and breaks any mind-controlling powers that cause confusion. So really good uh, to have around. The Honor Guard squad by itself is uh, not affected by morale, as you can see here. Little fun fact, they start off with lower health than the uh, original Grey Knights, 
but get um, affected by the bionics upgrades. So with one bionic upgrade, they are more or less the same health value as the granites were before, but the second bionic later on will get them over. So they uh, are a little better. Your last tier two infantry squad are these cool Primaris Incessor squad. Everybody loves Primaris. Here you have the Primaris squad for the uh, um, Blood Ravens, you could say. These are anti-infantry um, specialists. They get also a sergeant for rally, can get crack grenades. And the special weapon they can get is Vengeance Grenade Launchers. Will explode after a short duration after being fired. Effective against groups of infantry and heavy units. So it's uh, doubles down on the um, anti-infantry part they do, but it's like an IOE attack. So if you have um, clumped up squads, these guys will do uh, fairly well. And in general are, let's say, better you could say better space marines uh, in that sense, but uh, not as versatile as your tactical marines and also limited to one, so you cannot spam them. So if you're then hitting tier three, you get uh, four more squads, because, I, because why not? Um, the two squads you can get uh, right away in tier three without an orbital relay is one, your Stern Guard veteran squads, which is a buffed up tactical marine. Um, Better stats all around have Reconnates can rally with the Sergeant. The Sergeant by itself is really um, expensive. The whole unit is really expensive or has a few models. And can get uh, special weapons, quote unquote, uh, which are the rounds. You can get Hellfire rounds for uh, infantry and demons. You can crack and penetrate rounds for heavy infantry. You can Tempest rounds against heavy infantry, but also vehicle are less effective. So against vehicles and buildings. And last but not least, this is also the by the uh, how should I say, the latest in the tech tree is the Vengeance rounds, which are more piercing effective and against most infantry, but uh, most units, but um, very good against heavy infantry. So choose what you want. These are special rounds, but they, they function in the game as uh, special weapons. <coughs> the other, um, how should I say, high tier unit you can get is Vanguard Returns. They have a shared cap with the uh, uh, Stern Guard Veterans by two years, so you can get get either like two Stern Guard or two Vanguard or one each. These are really good um, jump troops like your ASM but on steroids. They have um, the same abilities in that sense. They have melter bombs, they can rally, they can jump. But look at the weapons. They have some more weapons all considered in melee. So no melter um, weapons for them. They have power swords against infantry. They have lightning claws against heavy infantry. They have power fists against vehicles and building and last but not least thunder hammer that can stun targets so really good against let's say singular bigger targets like demons um, um, titans relic units they can be stunned um, not as good of course against smaller units because the stun uh, will not trigger because it is also already dead so very good against bigger units let's say bigger uh, tanky units can be used against tanky commanders as well. If you have then built your orbital relay beacon in tier 2, you get access to a terminators and assault terminators. Your terminators are, yeah, terminators, like uh, really t uh, sturdy, slow moving tier 3 infantry can teleport around, can be deep striked, of course, right away from the barracks. So very good if you are on the offensive, you can um, deep strike them in to uh, double down on your um, offensive, can also and the other way around used to be deep striked in a defensive position if you if need be. They um, get a terminate sergeant which is new. They can get heavy flamer and assault cannon and what is new a cyclone missile launcher. I'm always a fan of cyclone missile launchers. You may ask why. Um, the answer is pretty simple. The cyclone missile launchers is an additional weapon whereas the heavy flamer and assault cannon replaces one of the at either power fists or storm boulders. I think replaces the um, Storm Bolter, I guess. Um, the second missile launcher is on the back, so they ha still have their Storm Bolter firing. Additional weapons I'm always a big fan of, and um, yeah, later tiers you will al al almost always fight uh, big vehicles, so these second missile launchers are really well. Yeah, you can see the Storm Bolter gets replaced by the heavy weapon. <coughs> and then you have your Assault Terminators that can really dish out in melee. They are really tanky. Um, not the, the fastest on their feet, but can uh, get a Terminator Sergeant, can get teleported around 
have storm shields and thunder hammers so the thunder hammers are similar to the thunder hammers your vanguard red tanks can get so they can stun bigger targets so really good against uh singular bigger targets which is true for um thunder hammers in general okay let's talk about the vehicles then we have it the vehicles you have also quite a lot of you can see here um and lastly we will talk about the flyers so the vehicles we will go from the begin from the front to the end because this is tier kind of tier structured the first units you can get is a rhino which is a transport now gets also a little stone bolter on the top has uh, smoke launchers if you research it can transport troops is really fast yeah your standard transport unit you can think uh, say and then you have your land speeder which is a fast skimmer that can jump around later can get also multi um, multi melter instead of uh, the bolter gunner here so really good on that part and then we have a lot of different dreadnoughts here we have hellfire dreadnought which is your ranged only dreadnought the damage by itself from the weaponry isn't the greatest but what is really excels is the disruptions from this missile launcher the missile launcher uh, does not that much damage uh, against vehicles and buildings but yeah big big disruption against infantry can now also be upgraded by either twin linked auto cannon or later twin linked last cannon um, which of course incre increases its anti-vehicle capabilities then you have your quote unquote standard dreadnought which starts with <coughs> two uh, these you could say claws and a uh, wrist mounted flamer um, primarily used in melee combat of course but can get an assault cannon for really good anti-infantry stuff but later also a twinning glass cannon this twinning glass cannon i would only use if i would say um, i would always use it on a hellfire dreadnought but if you have a dreadnought on the field and he survives to the later tiers and then need you need some anti-vehicles right away you can upgrade it um, your ironclad dreadnought can be built from your orbital bomb Bombardment orbital relay, not before, is a uh, little tankier but slower and can have uh, some weapons here. You can get on the left arm a melter, and these are for the right arm. You can get a storm bolter or a hurricane bolter array. So, starts off with melee, similar to the uh, standard dreadnought, has one or two wrist mounted flamers. One wrist mounted flamer, I see. And then, uh, yeah, you can make him kind of a ranged beast as well. Last but not least, you have the uh, Venable Dreadnought. The Venable Dreadnought can only be fielded if you have Xeril around and hard tier 3 and have a relic or something like that. So it's a uh, later tier Venable um, Dreadnought has quite a lot of health, similar to the Ironclad Dreadnought. But now, take your breath, has quite a lot of weapon options. Uh, for left and right arm you can see here you can all you can think of it's like a flamer a missile auto cannons uh, twin linked heavy bolters assault cannon melt multi melters and all the stuff you can think of has different tier requirements in general from the top left to the bottom right the tier requirements increase so you can have it uh, for as you would like you could say which is true for most random dreadnoughts. If I'm thinking, for example, um, on the Thousand Suns dreadnought has like six different weapons. So yeah, there you have it. Really versatile, f fitting all the versatility uh, uh, theme of um, Space Marines. Speaking of versatility, we have another tier two unit, which is the Razorback Ricarius. Um, just look at the heavy bolter mounts he has to access to. Starts with a heavy flame on top, but can get uh, another storm bolter here on the front for some extra cash and then can be upgraded to one of five different weaponries I have them all built here so you can see them from the left right we have uh, the uh, twin linked heavy bolters we have the assault cannon these are more or less directly available when you build them they have different requirements but yeah, it, this requires tier 2 and this is tier 2 vehicle so you have to right away but the other re um, weapons have some requirements. For example, the multi melter here requires a second artifact. So you have to build an additional um, tier 2 building to get this uh, multi melter. So it, it turns to a more or less anti everything unit. You have some bolters and some multi melters. Then you can get the uh, plasma cannon in tier 4, but also needs a second armory, a uh, second artifact. 
So you double down on the anti-infantry, anti-blob infantry, you could say. And later on in tier 4, you can also get some less cannons on him. So really versatile as well. If you keep it alive on the, in the later tiers, you can get really good weapons on it. Speaking of versatility, we will take a quick glance here over the tier 3 options are a Borillo. <laughs> I don't know if it's like a, a little, how should I say, meme name for Boreal, but I, I don't know. It's a flame or vindicator, more or less you can think of. Can also transport, so it's a razorback kind of unit with flamers. Can also get a flamer gunner on the top, which will probably fit in here. Can use smoke launchers. By default, um, let's quickly jump over to the machine uh, cult. Will not be visible here because here is the icon of the smoke launchers, and here is the icon of the heavy uh, armor deployment, or whatever the tier four research. So if you research one of those, it will be available to build. So if you, um, most likely you will research the smoke launchers and then it will pop here, but it also works if you skip the smoke launchers, get tier two, then it will uh, occupy this space. So it's not uh, available right away. You have to research one or the other. Yeah, you get another flamer guy on the top, to double down on the flamer um, weaponry it has. It's tier three. In tier 3 you also get Predator, and the Predator, as you see here, is also very versatile. The standard loadout is a um, auto cannon, I think, and heavy boulders on the sides. But as you can see here, you can get uh, quite a little, uh, quite a different loadouts. Um, it can get um, like a flamer loadout, and this is assault cannons on the side, I think, and a flamer on top. It can get assault cannons on the top, and is this last cannons? Auto cannons, I guess, on the sides. Then you have the uh, Predator Infernus, which has melters on the sides and plasma cannons at the side, so very interesting loadout. Then you have the Annihilator, which has melters on the side and a <laughs> plasma cannon on the top, so it's kind of a uh, switcheroo. Maybe, maybe this is a mistake, so the plasma cannons would be neat here. Not sure. Annihilator, for example, for the uh, Infer uh, Imperial Fist has like all the plasma in the world. And then you have the, what is it called, Annihilator, which is more or less the thing you are used of seeing of Predators in Tier 4 in vanilla. Less cannons on the top, less cannons at the side. And last but not least, we have the um, Conversion Beamer. So Conversion Beam is a anti... Uh, very effective against almost all targets, not as effective against heavy vehicles. So I'm not really sure what it does. Obliterates everything but the most heavily armored enemy vehicles and structures. Aha, so big damage <laughs> and gets, this looks like melters on the sides. Yeah, conversion beamer had quite a big noise production, you could say in the previous version, but I think that this uh, got fixed in uh, any way or the other. Now back to the overview here. In T4, you can get access to a whirlwind, which is a long range artillery. You can see the range is really long and can get vengeance missile barrage, which is new which is a missile barrage ability that takes up resources and yeah, you could more or less uh, think of them similar to the missile barrage of the Tau uh, unit. So really good, but costs you resources. Cooldown is uh, rather slow indeed. Limited to one. Speaking of limited, all these are limited to one and all these land raiders share a cap, so you can normally only field one. The first you can get is the land raider Phobos. Has Storm boulders or heavy boulders on the top, trailing glass cannons at each side, and a gunner here can transport stuff, including terminators, and can use the machine spirit to resist some damage. Not sure if this, this is the one where it's also slower. No, it doesn't slow down. There are some, um, how should I say, variants of the machine spirit where it uh, slows down. And then you have the land raider Helios, which is an artillery. Um, uh, artillery, um, land radar you could say, does uh, all the land radar things, has the machine sphere, transport stuff, but has um, like artillery on the back and last cannons on the side, so more uh, long range variant you could say. Last but not least, uh, you have the Anvilarium, like from Anvil, um, has the storm borders at the side, but now quadruple last cannons at each side, as well as a gun on top. Um, does Apart from that, also the standard land trader stuff like transporting stuff and have the machine spirit, but I think it stays, yes, it's the only land trader that can um, 
can hold dreadnoughts. So if you, for whatever reason, want to have a dreadnought like on the field faster, you can load it inside the uh, Anvilarium. It's only Land Raider of D3 that can do this. And now the big boys. We have the uh, Warhound Titan, which is, yeah, your more or less standard Titan has these anti-infantry weapons here, can uh, has this uh, morale, quote unquote, shield, which uh, shields it from damage until the shield is down, has a leg stomp, which allows it to stomp, boom, and has a juggernaut ability as a one uh, get out of jail free card, the lengthy cool run, however, it uh, moves faster and um, knocks back units around, including friendly units, I guess, and can get turbo laser destructors on each side for some, uh, yeah, more or less anti everything it states, yeah, highly effective against all armor targets. So, uh, it's, this is an infantry loadout, this is the new anti vehicle loadout. The bigger brother of this one is the Reaver Titan, also has this um, shield, has the Juggernaut ability, but has um, more option in terms of weapons, has a big flamer and this fist here, so can get um, some melee damage as well, but then you can decide if you put the left arm here to a Gatling cannon or the right arm to a laser blaster, and to addition to that you can exchange the um, missile launcher thingy on the top to a Volk Volkite Eradicator. So, quite a lot of options indeed to have different loadouts on these Titans. Not as much as on your Imperial Knights, but still. Whew. Last but not least, we will talk about the fly units. Here in here too, you can get a Lamp Speeder Tempest, which is a fast but fragile, fi fragile flyer. Um, by itself, the weapon isn't the greatest, but can be upgraded to frag missiles for anti infantry or crack missiles for anti vehicles and buildings. Most people get the crack missiles because in tier 2 you want to be able to fight with the first vehicles that come out. In tier 3 you can get access to this Storm Talon, really fast, but also you can see also fragile uh, unit that uh, dishes out quite a lot of damage. Let's look about the range. It's similar range to the Land Speeder, but has these deploy countermeasures, which is a machine spirit in disguise. It says it has some countermeasures in maneuvering around, whatever renders the Storm Talon invulnerable for a short time. Very um, lengthy cooldown, however. And then you can decide if you get it the last cannon or missile launcher loadout. The last cannon is locked behind late on the tiers. Yes, you can more or less right away get the missile launchers if you have a second artifact, but the last cannons uh, require tier 4, which is uh, common sense for all last cannons upgrades you see here. They all require tier 4. Oof. This was a lot of units, but it, it's not all. You, of course, have some campaign special units, which I will talk in the tech tree, but you have also one very special, or let's say two very special units in survival, where we will jump in right now. And here you see them. Everybody wanted to have them in game, and here they are, your custodian squads. And survival, if you play on harder or insane, you get these bad boys uh, if you are tier 4 and receive reinforcements. You get these tactical custodian squads, which is um, yeah your standard infantry. Um, they can get heavy flamers, and other than that, are really badass. Yes, and then you have also an assault round of those. These are more or less melee focused. Then we follow the path of scroll, fabulousness, and rage. Yeah, you can see them. They start off with random weapons, either power fists or power swords. No, they start off with power fists but can be equipped by power weapons. I think these are just your swords you can see here. Um, yeah, really badass unit, but survival exclusive. So custodes are in the game. There you have it. Easy. <laughs> About the other um, survival reinforcement units and uh, let's say um, campaign Honor Guards, I will talk uh, shortly in the tech trees what they are, what the, what's special about them. Yes, and with this we will now jump into the tech trees in general. See you in a second. And here we are on the tech tree document. As usual, you can find this in the Google Drive link I have in the description with all the different uh, other stuff I have for unification already. As usual, I will also not talk about all the stuff you see here, but the most important stuff and give you a general overview, you could say. Um, 
we will talk about upgrades first. You can get the sniper upgrades in your HQ, your infiltration upgrade for your skull probes, and later on also your infiltration for the scouts in your HQ. Your grenades you get from your um, barracks and uh, smoke launchers and tier 4 research you get in your machine building. All your hero upgrades, including the force commander aura, your standard commander aura 1 and 2, and your uh, librarian spells, you could say, psychic powers you get in the sacred artifact. The only upgrade you can get in your relay beacon, relay orbital relay, is the teleporter pack. All the other upgrades are in your armory, including plasma pistols and power swords, your bionics and uh, target finders 1 and 2, your uh, heavy weapon upgrades, whatever this is a charge upgrade for your honor guard. Very important if you have an honor guard on the field to get this. I uh, regularly forget to get this upgrade, but this is really, really strong because it has quite a big knockback and damage potential for your honor guard, which are otherwise uh, relatively slow. A new upgrade is the melter upgrades for your force commanders. This is your terminator force commander. If you have here war gear off, you get it in tier four. If you have here war gear on, you need to have all the war gears. Speaking of the war gears, these war gears are, f as it is for the standard now, all in your listening post. So you can get them rather quickly if you have multiple listening posts, which you normally have, uh, all the different war gear upgrades. So there's potential for a hero, uh, you could say, um, um, opener or playstyle, if you so desire. Speaking about tier strength, um, Space Marines start off very powerful right off the get-go if you have your barracks and your force commander and your term um, terminators, I was saying, your technical Marines, they have pretty good stats as it stands in tier one. So a very valid strategy is just to spam Space Marines, like there is no tomorrow. You can, if you have some decent control, um, do quite wonders with them. This is your tier one strength. Your tier 1.5 with your armory is okay-ish. You get grenades, get some bionic upgrades, but nothing really special apart from your assault marines. If you want to start with them, good harassment unit in the sense that it's really tanky. Damage wise, it's okay-ish, but it's really uh, the tankiness in which it uh, prevails. And in tier two, um, tier two and two tier three is really strong because you get access to your um, first vehicles which are really good uh, across the board you get access to your commanders there's like a triple hero playstyle where you get your force commander your chaplain your librarian but now you have also more variants you could also add the uh, force commander which i will need to add a little line here which i forgot and yeah you can have um, your primaries now your honor guard your recarius all the things and it it just gets better in tier 3. If you survive in tier 3, you can get terminators, your uh, veteran squads around, your predators, your flyers, like you name it. You can deep strike everything to the enemy phase. So tier 3 is like the very peak, I would say, for all the, the biggest damage, and not the damage, the biggest power spike, power increase for space marines as they now get so many different units that uh, especially all the infantry you can field right now is just... Uh, over the top, uh, very good. Terminators are very good. Vanguard and Stoneguard Reckoners are very good. Predators are really good as well. Really good tanks. And your your existing units are also strong as well and can now be also be deep striked into the enemy face. So all good. Your commanders scale with the second upgrade. You name it. The T4 is good but not overwhelming. You get like your whirlwind and your land traders, Ryan's including your uh, Gabriel Angelos and later on your um, Terminator, uh, Titans. Your Titans aren't as versatile as, let's say, Imperial God um, Titans. And your Land Raiders are good in the sense that they can support and are tanky. But yeah, that's it. Your Tier 4 is rather slim compared to your big packed Tier 3 where you got all the big um, infant units and whatnot. So... Um, if you want to aim for a timing to attack, like be very aggressive, it would be either tier two, where you have a special a timing push, let's say a triple hero push, or uh, honor guard and devastators, or something like that, honor guard and uh, dreadnought push, or something like a timing push in tier two. Or if you survive to tier three, you can unleash the hell with all your infantry and vehicle squads as well. 
Um, now we jump over to the unit overview real quick where I have all the different abilities of course and you will note that you need the armory uh, in different tiers to get the special weapons like you see here like the hellfire rounds for stern cut veterans um, tier 2 will and the armory are required for a lot of stuff here but also then later on you need um, tier 3 in armory for your devastators for example um, or your terminators you can see here that they have a cryo for their weapons also in armory. Armory is generally needed for special weapons, you could say even for uh, your vehicles, you can see here that the armory is more or less required. Mm, last but not least, we will talk about uh, the special things for some honor guard units. Um, most importantly, you have uh, you see here they are not very special but I will talk about the ones that are special. The one special thing is for example your librarian which starts off with all spells without you need the need to research it which is really nice. Your scouts are also very nice because you can, they can get sniper rifles out of the get-go without the need of the research so they can be very powerful in that sense. Then you have grey knights which is a, just another honor guard so we have two melee frontliners. Stone guards um, are more or less your standard rind. The terminators are also standard. Okay, no, they, no, they need um, don't need an armory and stuff for their weapons here. Custodians I have talked about, and yeah, that's it. Everything else is the standard variant, but um, of course without the pop cap requirements, as it is the usual for honor guards. Okay, with these tech trees out of the way, we will now jump into the build orders. And here we are in the build order document. Uh, as usual, the first build order I show you is the standard one, quote unquote standard here. Uh, standard means for me you have something to defend yourself, to get you on the map and then have a decently timed tier two. For space minutes, it would be, would, this would be having a second servitor to build faster, getting two scouts to cap, getting a first and technical marine out that also can cap one uh, point before it gets in the offens offensive with your force commander or on the defensive if you are like pressured. Later on you want to add a second squad of space marines to have something more on the field to defend yourself. Get a second uh, generator if need be. You can also um, get around with no generator if you're for example skipping um, building listening posts, uh, upgrading listening posts you can get tier 2 without getting another generator. Or only upgrading like one listening post and having a little fight or whatnot, then you can get tier two without a second generator. You of course can opt to have a heavy tier one. The heavy tier one uh, is defined, you could say, by that you get more space units out, that you get uh, grenades out, get uh, the upgrades for your force commander. The plasma pistol is only for your force commander in tier one, as you can only get sergeants in tier two, uh, bionics and target finders. And this, how should I say, the difference between okay and good space marine players is the usage of scouts. So you want to have scouts with sniper rifles in the second line to support your course. You want to have two um, plasma generators, maybe even three, if you like hard uh, upgrading your listing post and whatnot. So two to three plasma generators before you tick tier two. <clears throat> and this is the one uh, fun let's say fun build order I told you in the tech tree already um, really tier one focused you get all the space marines in the world and a click them to the enemy no you need to micro them as well get the uh, squad cap upgrades and get all the space marines you want at some point of course you want to get a plasma changer and an armory up to get uh, frag grenades and some upgrades so they are even more tanky and dealing even more damage but this is a build order that can be a nightmare to play against because it's just so many space marines. Of course you can also um, opt to go for assault marines. Uh, assault marines you can get up to two. Um, some um, also mix mesh them, which is in general something you can do. These build orders are focusing on one aspect, but uh, export players will uh, adjust them right away when they see what enemy does. So they, more, for example, go for one assault marine, then they go for tactical or even the force commander, depending on the situation. But if you want to go full in Assault Marines, this is the old icons, right? Uh, I will change these icons, sorry. These are the old icons, just look at them. Nobody knows what this actually means. But yeah, I will change these icons. So you can get two Assault Marines um, 
as you have the armory already up, you can opt to get the upgrades because why not? One or two, probably two um, plasma generators then to go to tier two. Come on. And then you have an opener where you go for scouts and sniper rifles. This is also a hard commitment for scouts and sniper rifles. These two do not need to be added if you uh, have the upper hand with these three already. So don't no need to really get overboard if you do not need to. You want, however, have the force command around to A, spot for your scouts so the snipers can use their full range and B, be a kind of meat shield so your fragile and expensive scouts with sniper rivets do not get focused down by enemy ranged squads, ranged squads. So you want to have the force commander as a little barrier in between. As I said, you may or may not want to have these two scouts and then have a rather quick tier two instead of adding more um, resources on the field that cannot take down listening posts. Maybe I even, uh, yeah, I will probably um, delete these two because these are too big of an investment to have uh, on the field. Rather have a fast tier two instead. Then of course you can rush tier two, um, get generator, then barracks or armory and take tier two. As the usual, tier two rushes are very um, dangerous. They can be really good in the payoff, however. So uh, better, for example, used in team games where you have like one going for standard opener and then maybe can defend you a bit before you can then field like tier two units and surprise your opponent. <clears throat> then a more, uh, last but not least, a more, let's say, Mimi build order where you get for hero Boreal and get all the, up the war gears you can get to have a, like a really, really tanky force commander that can teleport already. And then you get tier two and then fight from tier two onwards with more war gear or more units. Yeah, pretty meme most of the time. It's totally not um, optimal to play like that, but it's fun nevertheless. Okay, with these build orders of the way, we will jump now into replay. It is a game I have played actually against Rex where you can see me um, Play good or bad? We will see in a second. And here we are on the replay where I play Space Marines versus very difficult uh, symbols here. But don't be fooled, this is just Rex uh, having a smurf day or whatever. So uh, he sometimes likes to do it. Um, also Titan's Fall is one of his favorite maps, I assume, because I see him um, play this map quite often, but I, I hate it. But okay, that out of the way, I open with scouts and sniper rifles. So you can see him here adding, uh, only having three scouts here, not the, f the and I will stick also to uh, three, because um, yeah, it's a waste of resources in the end to go for more. I will have to uh, change the build order in the drive already. So I get um, the force commander a little later because I want to have my points um, I want to have the listing post on my points a little, a little earlier. You can get the force commander right away, as you can see here in the resources. I opted to for a little more, how should I say, uh, greedy or um, economy or more economy orientated start. So I can build the two listing posts right away and have the force commander later. Probably not the best way to do it. It's probably better to get first the force commander so it starts building already. Uh, the good thing about three scouts is that you're really fast on the map. Uh, capping points, you want, maybe on this map you want to prioritize getting this point up before the points in your base. Uh, you can do that. Have now the sniper training, um, but using my resources, resources for the first commander first and then later will upgrade this squad with sniper rifles. I actually decided against it so I have enough resources to get um, the listening post up, but yeah, you want to have scouts with sniper rifles on the field earlier so you can fight off these slugger boys because you see having the sniper rifles building takes quite a long time so have if i had gotten these sniper rifles earlier i would have killed two to three two let's say two slugger um, models right away because once they hit the field you will see they will do quite a lot of damage pow one spot down reloading And missing, he missed. So here, if he would have hit, I would have killed another model here. So killing one that was, we are about to get away. Um, yeah, so Rex is fast and capping here. So he got 
this thing out while probably getting okay he got all the stuff already so orcs are really fast in that way now i have this uh, snipers here need to run away because there's a freaking big mech and the big mech is not uh pleased about these snipers but you see here i have my force commander out to shield these these miraculously survive with very low hp but my force he teleported right in my force commander so he can force on melee combat have the sniper uh dudes killing off more slugger boys so this is a favorite engagement how should i say engagement that favors me so i will kill this whole squad on the retreat so very good for me getting the as outer points but the problem for me is that i do not have the middle so the resources are more or less in favor for rex um will i get tier 2 now yes so really good tier 2 timing you can achieve with this build order uh, as you can see here but yeah you have nothing really to kill this listening post apart from your force commander and the force commander is busy fighting off this big mech so no way i can get this listening post down yet i wanted to kill these models but i wasn't able to so i'm busy running away so you, as soon as you see a, a range squad you want to run away i would have uh, needed to get a listening post upgraded which i do not have gotten so uh, Rex could actually have forced me in my base. Getting even sniper rifles on these two squads, is, on this uh, squad here, is maybe a waste of resources and really big misplay here. Uh, getting over here, or not actually, I got the DD cap, but yeah, got away already as well because there are just slugger boys. Uh, totally misplaying this here, losing a lot of HP on my force commander for no real reason. Um, yeah, you can see. Um, I'm not really good for space marines in general, but uh, yeah, you want to have better micro. But now I'm kind of pincer moving this uh, shooter boys here. We'll kill at least two more models. Really nice. This model as well, so a lot of damage done. The Big Mac is here getting into this uh, post, but <laughs> no way he will survive. He tried to repair it, I guess. So uh, really good uh, timing for me, hitting tier 2 as well, but now, now. Uh, decision time. What do you do in tier 2? I'm adding the armory really late. Normally you want to add the armory on your way to tier 2, not uh, yet. So I have quite the, how should I say, the opportunity window is closing. Not sure if it's the right choice actually to get the armory. Uh, more probably let's say the machine cold or sacred artifact would have been the better choice here for sure. Really big mi misplay here, not looking at my scouts as they will now run in and die. Very, very expensive squads with two snipers. Killing one model at least, but yeah, getting absolutely murdered here with big shooters, I say, on these shooter boys. So yeah, really sad day over there. Force commander coming over here. But yeah, I have no real direct pressure on tier two. Uh, just getting the armory up and now what? Nothing, so it's... Ah, <sighs> bad. Bad for me. I have a really good timing on tier 2 and then not doing anything. Getting scout infiltration and then I think I cancel it because I see that my scouts will not be able to do stuff because there's the Big Mac around. So even if I have infiltration, it's uh, not the best way to move forward. So I cancel it in the in the end and getting a machine code. The machine code would have been needed already. No real need for the armory. The armory is a waste of resources here. So yeah, you see kind of like the, the downtime now. I don't have the map. I kind of wanted to fight this point, but then uh, failed because I haven't got enough uh, troops on the field. And now the orcs are on my base and I have no defense. Here. I'm just upgrading my listening post, killing um, my machine cult here. I have one, uh, one servitor parked here to get a bigger generator at some point, but yeah. My base is in shambles. This listening post will get up. This um, machine cult will get up as well, so I can get a squad out here. It, it will be a Recarius, but I have lost all my scouts, but two models have lost my force commander. So all the momentum that was um, in on my side in, in uh, tier one, you could say, because I killed a lot of orcs, is now gone. I should have used the momentum to uh, get. Um, honor guard squad out or something let's say the armory was killing my momentum i would have needed a um, either devastators right away 
for like machine cult right away or a sacred artifact for more infantry and heroes right away. No real need to double down on infantry because I opened scouts. And scouts, um, yeah, leave you with not, let's say, not the best scaling in terms of upgrades and, and whatnot. My Razorback is now out, giving me some breathing room, but yeah, I need some foot in the middle trying to get uh, the listening post out. I will get a second Recarius, which is probably not wise because once your enemy sees that you get vehicles, there will be anti-vehicle on the field. So um, I should have switched to more infantry and not more vehicle because you can see here it is stunned by the Big Mac um, uh, stun and now takes a lot of damage even just in melee. Are there... I don't think there are any power claws already, but still, the damage by the Big Mac and all the stuff, um, <coughs> how should I say, um, adds up in the end. And now I get the second Recarius, but yeah, probably, I'm not sure if it's the right call, losing my scout squad here as well, so yeah, not, not the best play on my end here. Getting the second Recarius, what I do have in my... Uh, favor is this thermoplasma generator, but what I should have done right now because you see all these resources I should have gotten the requisition upgrade right away because I will not be able to use all this power if I want to make a Infantry switch which I am about to make you see in the sacred artifact. So Switching back and forth in different ways because I saw tank busters and tank busters is something in the orcs that you cannot easily counter with vehicles not even close because they are infiltrated and have long range. How you do you even counter this? You don't uh, really for the most part. So I wanted to switch back to infantry. So I get a chaplain, I get the sacred artifact, I get all the stuff done but I have lost <laughs> my stuff in the meantime while the orcs has, have maintained their squads and whatnot. So I try to buy some time getting the Alcarius in here killing some shooter boys and hoping that Rex falls for the trap and sends all this stuff over here. But, but he does not, I think. So I'm even moving in out of the way and now uh, moving over here, trying to, yeah, come on, follow me. But Rex is like, yeah, whatever, and uh, runs away because his Vicarious by itself does not do the greatest damage in ranged against buildings and stuff. I would have needed to get the uh, uh, multi melder, which I could get now, but you see for my resources here, I get all the stuff out, but I float power like crazy. I would have needed to get the income upgrade for requisition right away because like you want to think uh, in the future. I now have a lot of power but I will want to get more infantry out and infantry costs for the main part power. Yeah. Rex on the other hand has now the map control killing my little outpost here so I'm stuck in my base. I will however make a last ditch effort and this is like a very poor decision in itself because, um, how should I say, uh, I see a lot of power, I say, yeah, I get a Dreadnought, but uh, it's the other way around. You do not want to, uh, um, how should I say, dictate your unit choices by your economy. You want to uh, uh, tinker your, anim uh, your economy around the units you want to build. So, yeah, again, I could have gotten the requisition upgrade a long time ago, which would have got me more income right now as I'm really low in income at the moment. I do have my honor guard now. I do get some bionics upgrade. What I would need however is a upgrade the an upgrade for the um, charge here. But now I can at least fend off my base here because I've, I have a dreadnought. I have primaris. I have this honor guard. So whoa! This guy floats around. So yeah I can, can hold my base here but yeah at what cost? I have no map control so what I do after this, I can spoil you a bit. I do, do I do the smart thing? Do I try to get my points back and get back on the economy game? Or B, do I make a straight A move to the enemy base and think I can win with this force? Please lock in your, your options. It is B, the worst option. I think, yeah, I have only a chance now to make this timing push work which kind of is true, but kind of is also not true. I could 
be able to defend this, let, let's say, with a Dreadnought and uh, use my Primaris on this side and my Honor Guard on the other side to like get some uh, economy damage for the Orcs because Orcs need to reinforce quite a lot to stay around so this could be uh, a way to go but yeah I just move in I get some skull probes later on you see here to uh, detect these um, shooter boys but I don't have a commander score to get those. I don't have a lot of upgrades for my infantry. I don't have upgrades for my commanders and whatnot. And I have storm boys in my base now. So <sighs> I think I had, I kind of had a chance in this game if I would have um, tried to defend my base, get my uh, relic back, get uh, defend this point, maybe get a foot in the middle or something, but not the enemy base. Because there's one thing that um, Ox is really good with. This is the uh, Gretchens. The Gretchens are infiltrated, uh, commander un uh, infiltrated um, repair units. So you cannot kill them as easily. And yeah, they repair everything. So again, the big float at some point will get the economy upgrade, but it's <laughs> way too late, way too late. I have should have gotten it a lot, lot earlier. So yeah, I'm pointing out a lot of mistakes. But you can also see that you can switch around in builds quite a bit. Um, I should have focused on faster vehicles or faster uh, big infantry in tier 2. Getting this uh, generator here was a good move, but not using this power to get more uh, bigger requisition income is a bad uh, decision. I killed the truck here, but other than that, there are knobs out now, there are shooter boys, there are somewhere as well the um, tank busters there they are firing at my helper treadmill so this is doomed to be the end <laughs> yeah with these units dying here I would end this guide here if I have forgotten something as usual if I told you wrong stuff please correct me in the comments add stuff in the comments if you liked it you can leave a like if you want to see more guides in the future make sure to subscribe so you'll be immediately notified to it yeah and as usual guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye!